Uh, ooh, oh my lanta. Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel, Dave D Fishing. So in this video, we're, we're gonna start off like most of my other videos where I'm fishing for one thing, but end up finding something else, another type of fish, and going after those. So initially I started off fishing for Tatog. The Tatog bite was not spectacular at first. I was catching a couple shorts here and there. Um, and I just end up getting distracted by a silvery toothy fish that I've never caught on my kayak before. End up making some sacrifices in the form of a Tsunami Carbon Shield Rod and a Daiwa Saltist 3000 that ended up going in the water. But you know what? It is what it is. I moved on and targeted these beautiful toothy critters, silvery critters that we know as weak fish or skatig, I believe is the other name for them. Um, ended up giving me an opportunity to use the flutter jigs that I just barely started making a week and a half ago at this point. Um, I'll show you close-ups of those later on in the video, not a big deal. Um, yeah, caught a couple of these toothy critters over two days. The first day um, again, fishing for Chitag, caught a lot of shorts, got bored, find new fish. Um, but yeah, learned a lot about these things. And I hope you guys enjoy the two day journey with me where the first day I'm sort of learning, figuring out what these fish look like and um, look like on the fish finder and just figuring them out. And then the second day I hit it hard um, using flutter spoons and jigs for these toothy critters. Enjoy the video. So like I said, guys, started the morning fishing for Tatog using jigs and light tackle. Um, Tatog fishing wasn't good, so I actually started noticing very weird marks on my fish finder. And luckily, I had my flutter jig set up with me on a spinning rod. Um, so I got distracted by that and just foregoed the Tatog and ended up working well. <clears throat> Mess around with my flutter jig because I keep marking all kinds of stuff on the bottom. Oh, oh my God. Oh, 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 that was a weak fish. That was a weak fish. Oh, oh we're doing that again. Damn it. In case you don't know what a weak fish looks like, this is an up close and personal view of one. As you can see that big open mouth, big fangs on there. They're eating whatever fish can fit in their mouths, squid. Um, you know, so those yellow fins on there and that speckled pattern along their back. These fish are very similar to sea trout that you see down south, um, and they behave the same way too. So I'm going to keep trying for weak fish now because that's like a rarity in my parts up here. I've never caught one on my kayak, so I'm going to keep trying. And I want to catch one on my flutter jig, so I actually made these. I'll show you them. Um, made a couple pink orange assist hook on there, single assist hook. I probably should have put two, but I'm experimenting and having fun. So um, almost caught my first weak fish on a jig that I made. Oh, there's one. Oh, what's that? No, that felt like a scup. Yeah, that weak fish had an interesting feel to it when I brought him up. Felt, oh, there's one right there. There's one right there. This is only the second time I've ever dropped a rod off my kayak. It was really stupid on my part because um, I wasn't ready to scoop weak fish when I knew I needed the net out and I was just being lazy is what it comes down to. But I never got the rod back, but it is what it is. I'll keep on fishing for weak fish. I don't know what that was. That's a sea bass. That's a really nice sea bass. Oh, what a day. Dropped my, um, I don't know what it is, but we're getting the, oh, got him. <laughs> oh, yeah, I dropped my, um, Albi rod in the water. That was like a $300 setup, but you know what? I just caught a weak fish, PB weak fish, so I could keep one of these. 
Oh, and I caught it on a jig that I made. Yes, 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 yes. Wow, look at that. Oh, that's amazing. I'm so pumped right now. Let me show you this. That's friggin' awesome right there. I'm a little flutter jig, a bright orange one that I made the other day. So I never tied assist hooks really. I don't really have a ton of experience with them. <laughs> That's awesome though. Oh man, I'm pumped. One more look. <laughs> big old teeth on there. Let's see how big he is. Oh, I'm so pumped right now. Yeah, like I said, yes, I dropped a $300 rod in the water. I don't really care. It is just money. Uh, let's see. So they have to be 16 to keep. He is 19, a clean 19 and a quarter. So this is actually my third weak fish. Um, the first two I missed, this one didn't miss them that time. So I'm sort of saying screw the Tatag right now, cause I don't, this is a very rare thing for me to be able to catch these. So I figured out on the fish finder, there's a, there's still a lot of sea bass around, but the way the sea bass are showing up and the weak fish are um, very different. So the weak fish are, they have bigger swim bladders. I used to catch them down in Florida when I was stationed down there. Um, very large swim bladders, sea bass, not so much. So we're able to sort of differentiate the two fish down there right now. So soon after that last week fish, um, I find out there's nothing more than sea robins and sea bass and scup down there. So end up calling it a day and I come back in two days where I just target uh, weak fish only and I end up doing pretty well. All right, good morning guys. Welcome to day two. <clears throat> We're gonna be fishing for Buzzards Bay weak fish again. Two days ago, I started figuring out the code, cracking the code of um, what they look like on the fish finder and the general depths they were hanging out this time of year. Um, I figured out my flutter jig works fantastic for them. Um, I made some improvements to the flutter jig I had made, which I'll show you right now. So <clears throat> let me get this thing straightened up a little bit. But here it is. Um, this is the flutter jig that I made, but I also added assist hooks to it, double assist hooks. Um, they also added a coating to the jig itself just to give the color some more depth. I don't know if it'll make a difference or not. In my little mind, it might, I don't know. I'm also using lighter tackle this time instead of a broomstick. So I got this little Daiwa Tatala with 10 pound braid on there. And then the leader itself is just 20 pound fluorocarbon. So. These, these weak fish have quite a few teeth, they're really sharp. So I'm hoping the fluorocarbon is enough to stand up to it. Weak fish aren't so weak, I found out. They usually are a little sluggish right when you hook them. Um, and then once they come up about five feet or so, then they really start taking off. So yeah, I lost quite a few fish last time because of their large soft mouths. I kept pulling the hook, I pulled the hook on a couple of them as they came to the top, not necessarily while they're swimming um, in any depth of water, just once they're at the top, they kept shaking the hook. So I'm hoping the double assist, if I catch any weak fish, will hold a little bit better. Um, also, I have my net ready because last time my net wasn't ready and I ended up knocking a rod in the water, a really expensive one. So let's get out to 30, 40 feet of water. I learned last time what they look like on the fish finder. They look a little bizarre um, because of their large swim bladders. So we're gonna hunt these things down. Hopefully they're in, they're in the same spot again. The last weak fish that I kept was 19 and a quarter inches. It had a bunch of um, like five inch long peanut bunker in its stomach. So we're gonna find the bait, find the fish, whichever comes first and we're gonna stick to the plan and look for weak fish for a little bit. If I can't find any weak fish, then I'm going to try for Tatog again. Last time I was out, I didn't find any decent sized Tatog. I did find some, but there weren't really anything to brag about. So 
Um, yeah, let's get out here a little bit more, probably another eighth mile to this 30, 40 feet of water, and we will start poking around for some weak fish. So here's how we're gonna work this jig. So just drop it down. Usually I've just been letting it hit the bottom momentarily, and then I lift it up about a foot. And then you're just doing these really rapid sweeps up. And then you wanna make sure that bait is falling really slowly. Um, that's when the weak fish have been hitting it and on the drop. There have been times where I've let it free fall and they still grab it, but um, this slow motion falling back down is, I feel, what really triggers these weak fish to bite. And I imagine most other predatory fish, because they're seeing this jig as a dying bait fish and they're being opportunistic and swooping up that bait. Um, with this bait that I'm using in particular, this flutter jig, it actually vibrates when you rip it up really quick. Um, and I imagine that helps a ton as far as attraction um, initially for the fish to come over to your jig. All right, seeing some of those really wide, strong marks. Um, I said last time, that's sort of what I was seeing when I was fishing a couple days ago and ended up finding weak fish, so we'll see. Looks like there's one, two, three, possibly four fish down there. About to drift over them right now. So we'll see if they're in a biting mood or not. I already caught a couple scup already, but not what I was looking for, but definitely when I get hits on this flutter jig with the double assist, they get hooked up pretty quickly rather than me missing whatever bite it is a million times and then hooking it with a single. Something just bumped that. Speak of the devil. Um, this fish is a little higher up. Let's see. Holy smokes. Ooh. Huh. Oh, that was a weak fish. That was a weak fish. Good. Oh, damn. That was a weak fish right there. All right. Almost had the first one of the day. Yeah, they're really frustrating these fish. It's always when they get to the top, sort of the same thing as fluke. They'll start shaking their heads pretty violently right, right when their head gets out of water and then they'll pop off. Oh, I don't know what that is. It's taking line. That might be a weak fish because they usually, they've been swimming forward unlike scup or sea bass. Like this one just swam quite a ways forward. Hopefully it doesn't break off. Oh, damn. In the net. Oh. <laughs> oh, finally. Yeah, I missed one earlier. That's a nice one right there, though. So there you go, guys. You can reliably go to Buzzards Bay and go catch some beautiful weak fish. This thing's definitely over 16 inches or so, but look at that thing. Beautiful fish. We're still gonna measure him though, but he's definitely over over 16 inches. These things have teeth, so you gotta be careful. I'm gonna drop him in the water. Same thing, cookie cutter fish is last. Oh, actually, this one's bigger. Uh, 19, 19 three quarters, 19 three quarters. So. We're gonna keep him. These things actually taste really good. I don't recommend putting them in a soup or steaming them because their, their flesh is really soft. Um, I fried one up and it was really good in the past. I've steamed them. It, I didn't really like the uh, texture of it, but um, you could do what you want. But yeah, beautiful looking fish though. I'm so pumped right now. Lots of them down there. One, two, three, four of them right down there right now. So we'll keep one and now we're just gonna fish for fun. That was, and that's it. All right, I'm marking 
some fish just below my kayak. So you got one, two fish. Oh, what is that? Is that a butterfish? Oh man, that's a nice one. I've never caught a butterfish that big. He just got smoked by that hook though. All right guys, so I just caught this. I think that's a large butterfish. I don't know as far as the ways a butterfish go as far as size, but very interesting. I think you could eat these, so I'm gonna give it a whirl. Look at that thing, it's pretty sweet. But he did get, uh, he wasn't going anywhere. He got nailed in the face and the side. He wasn't going anywhere. Oh my goodness, I don't know what that is. She be taking line. Huh. Interesting. That's... Feeling this is going to be a net or whatever it is. Oh no. Hopefully she doesn't come off, whatever it is. My lanta. Oh, come here, come here, come here, come here. Net, baby, net, net, net. <laughs> oh, there we go. Oh. All right, another one on the flutter. Wasn't going anywhere. She took a little bit of line, or he. Uh, 20, 20 and a half. Not bad. Not bad. All right. Wow. Good old fish. Good fish. 20 and a half. That is my PB weak fish right there. All right, let's continue on. Excellent, excellent. Pull in line. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's a weak fish. Or it's, ooh, or it's a doggy. Just gotta be careful. I only have a um, 10 pound test on here, so I gotta be careful. I saw a sea turtle not not too long ago, maybe half an hour ago. He peeked his head up for a little bit, went back down. Oh, another one. Oh, look at that, like a pro. Let me put this back here for a second. A little more space. All right, look at that. Yeah, definitely the double assist hooks way better. Way, way, way better. All right, guys, so here's another beautiful weak fish. He's definitely probably around 20 again. Um, so they really wanted me to slow down the fall of this jig as the winds picked up. I don't know why. Um, that's how the cookie crumbles. So let me get the hooks out of this thing and we'll get him back. Really nice fat fish though. Beautiful. All right. She goes. Oh man, I didn't measure. I should have measured that one. I think it's probably over, over 20, but oh well. Let's carry on. Yeesh. I 
That feels like a weak fish. That's a scup. That's the biggest damn scup I've ever hooked. Moment of truth. What is it? Oh, another one. Had the net ready that time. Wow. All right. Another one for the books right there. It's going back probably about 18 inches or so. Really nice fish. Having a blast out here. So the wind is calmed down and as the wind has calmed down, the fish started biting again, which is good. Let's get back down there. So weak fish, definitely have your net ready to go. I'm gonna drop back down there. What the hell? The hell is that? Some sort of lizard fish, it's pretty cool. I don't know if he's gonna live through that. I hooked him sort of through the brain, but we'll see. So yeah, just caught a lizard fish of some sort. I'll show you a little bit of a better close up. Yeah, so I just caught this little lizard fish. I don't, I'm not sure what type it is, but if you know, let me know. I'm just putting it close so you can maybe identify it a little bit better. He's up off the bottom quite a bit, so yeah, that's a new one for me. Let's get him off the hook. Hook something. Ah, oh, doggy. Bork, bork. Never had one hit a jig before. Ow, damn. All right, let's see what something else is down there too. Ooh, lots of, lots of stuff down there. Hmm. Ooh, this one's got some fight in it. I like it. Ooh, mama. This might be the last fish of the day. Oh no, no, not what I wanted. No, no, no. Yeah, these things, you gotta sort of grab them like they owe you money. Don't let them wiggle around. All right guys, so I'm gonna call it a day. Um, this is day two of fishing for a weak fish. Two days ago, I initially went out for Tatag, ended up not really getting any keeper sized ones. So was going after some fish that I was marking on my fish finder that looked a little bizarre and they turned out to be weak fish. Um, I've been catching them on my flutter jig that I made. The first day I had a single assist hook. Um, then that same day I made a double assist hook setup. And then I came out today and it works much, much better. Uh, much less lost fish. I think I only lost one weak fish at the boat or the kayak. Um, and then I landed the rest, some really nice ones too. So you can actually go out and reliably go fishing for or target weak fish right now in Buzzards Bay. So that's fantastic. I've never done this before. So two days ago and today were my first uh, actual times targeting weak fish and it is quite a bit of fun. You don't need flutter spoons. I'm not gonna keep pushing the flutter spoon thing. You could probably use paddle, good old paddle tails, um, diamond jigs, anything like that, and they'll probably eat it. The weak fish that I opened the other day had a five inch long uh, bunker in it or pogey. So I would just stick with that and you should be good. And then I was fishing 30 to 40 feet of water. Um, bite was mostly in the morning. And then like I said, um, today, 
as time went on the wind picked up and they just didn't want to bite which was the case two days ago as well um, I imagine the bite might pick up in the evening again but it can't stay that long so and also I caught some weird fish I caught a lizard fish of some sort I don't know the exact species I caught blunt, blunt nosed lizard fish in the past, um, but that one was different. I have no clue what it was. And I also caught a giant butterfish, uh, caught tons of scup, sea robins, actually no sea bass today, which is a little odd. Um, yeah, that's really it. So I, get, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys found this entertaining at least. Please give a like and subscribe. I am hoping to be going for a Tatog soonish. Um, I did have crabs with me today but I was like yeah I'm gonna definitely stay with the weak fish um, those crabs were sort of a plan B in case um, weak fish didn't work out so um, yeah stay tuned I'm sorry for the lapses in time between videos but just life's busy and um, trying to buy a house making jigs I'm selling those on the side yeah just life but um, yeah please give a like and subscribe thank you bye